A great meeting point, convenient light meals, hot and cold beverages, or a quick snack on the go? What's your order for the day? We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. So when kids grow up with a famous dad who was not only a radio DJ but owned a radio station, music inevitably becomes their staple food and a road that they will have to explore. This afternoon I'm super excited to have the talented Nyango siblings, Anati and Manala. They are not writing solo, they're here with their mother who is a momager. You know what momager means? A mom who's a manager? Ever heard of that term? Christiana Kardashian's man. Okay, anyway, we're kicking off the show with Anati, who uh, at the age of 14 was already creating beats for some of SA's most prominent hip hop artists. By the age of 16, music he had produced was topping the charts. At 18, Anati had worked alongside Grammy Award winning Lebo M on a compilation album and the opening song for the 2009 FIFA Confederations Cup. For many years, he's been quietly hustling behind the scenes, honing his talent and making a name for himself as one of the most prominent uh, hip hop producers. His work with the likes of Casper and AKA has given us award-winning hip-hop anthems like Jump and The Saga internationally. This guy has collabs with the DJ Khaled and Omerian, just to name a few. He's always busy, lives in the studio, but today we have got him in our studio. Welcome to Anati. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. I'm so glad you're here because I've been wanting to tell you, I feel like you, you're like our DJ Khaled. Why? <laughs> because Khaled was like that for years. He was just like, you know, producing and every now yeah. and then he'd scream, ah! DJ Khaled, and then he'd like disappear, and then just be behind the scenes. There, there was a song he did with a whole of people. I was like, none of them. I'm so hooked. Yeah, that was like the first one I think I ever heard. Me too. I him. think that's how I got introduced to him. And I was like, okay, this guy's a bit loud. With like Akon, yes. Fat Joe, and beep beep, do it twice, Ludacris. Yeah. Um, who else was it? There were a lot of people. Yeah, but it was like a squad. Yes. Yeah, he had he had those big collabos. He was like the first one doing those. And that was him. And then slowly but surely, he was coming to the forefront, right? Yeah. So when you are 14 and you are producing beats, right? <laughs> when do we go to school? <laughs> Same time everybody else goes to school. I think I just treated my 24 hours a bit differently. So you know? were you ever like doing rugby and tennis and? Sport? Yeah, I was. Pl I used to play rugby and cricket. So you were still doing sport. Yeah. And then still producing. And making beats at break. During break time. Yeah. Did it ever get you into trouble? Like you, like now your work's not done because you're listening. There's headphones in your ear. No, I think the thing. I think it made me more focused because I was so persistent at just trying to get the beats right. That uh. be, because before I could do, I could make any beats. The rule was at home. Like you need to finish your homework. There's no music like during the week. Uh. That was the that was the rule. So I used to be like, you know, just at. <laughs> In, in break, like just making beats, like, aren't you guys gonna come play? I'm like, no, I'm fine, I'm here. Because that was the this. time I had, I only had like maybe 20 minutes. Uh -huh. So that was the time. And did you go to a school where music was considered a thing, was like music class or a band or violin class? When I, I mean, I went to a music academy first and then mm. it was a bit like shady and then. <laughs> shady? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like people, people open schools to make money. Was it like in a building downtown? <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't in the building downtown. It was just like, you know, I, I felt like maybe they were trying to get money through the system. Oh, so. That's my belief. I don't know. So you're sitting in class and you can see that you know more than them. I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the vibe. But yeah. I mean, I still learned a lot of things while I was in, in class. But I think that was just a, a stage for me to really just hone my theoretical mm. knowledge. Oh, okay, which, know. which always comes in handy. Yeah, I think that really helped. So on your website, you call yourself a neo-African fusion creator. <laughs> yeah. How long did, you, did it take you to come up with that? And you're like, so I'm gonna call myself neo, but I'm African. I, I think probably once I really started finding my African sound, you know? Yeah. Because it was like, how, how best do I export our culture from Ikaya? So uh -huh. I felt like, okay, this is the best way to describe what I'm trying to produce. Because what does stand out about your work is that there is that stamp, right? Because we're so desperate to, to be internationally acclaimed for, yeah, yeah. The, for the, 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 you know, the quality of it to be that, that we run away and sound that way. But there's something about you that stays, you know, South African. Were you very conscious about that? 
I don't know. I think it's just due to like isolation. I think I put myself in in a space where I wasn't at home. I was overseas, mm. where I wasn't, you know, in a space where people were speaking closer or you know mm. what I'm saying. So I had to be in a different space just to like conjure up those those kind of spirits, really, you know. And okay, so when you're not at home and you're in a different space, and you know, like you say, there's no one to speak closer to. How, how do you remind yourself of yourself? It just comes out within within the music making process. It's like I feel like you, you probably miss home so much. It just comes out. It's like writing a letter. Yeah, it's like writing a it's like writing a letter. And every time when I was in st in studio in the states, you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Tanda. Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, I, I, I can't go. I, I, what is that? I can't go. Is that like a cake? I can't go. Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah. All right. So, but that's where it all stems from. It's just like being being in that isolation, and then just knowing that the only thing that I really have is my culture mm. at that point. What 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 has to happen in order for you to create? Like, must there be a certain food? Must there be, you know, like a certain drink? It's it's a it's just like a vibe. I'd I'd like there's like a certain silence that I like in the room. Uh? Everybody's spirit has to be like on the same frequency. Like we have to be like calm. And then the music just brings everybody <laughs> like alive, you know. And I don't I don't like I don't I don't like playing music like when everybody's speaking and you know uh, like busy. Okay, and now here's the thing, uh, you know, uh, can I call you a celebrity cuz no. you want <laughs> This is why I asked. This is why I asked because when you ask celebrities if you can call them I mean, but I'm not a celebrity. I know celebrities. I don't feel like I'm a celebrity. What? Okay, now we're going to digress, but I want to know, <laughs> and I'm sure the rest of South Africa also want to know, what is your definition then of a celebrity? I mean, other people are celebrities. I, I, I try not to be a celebrity. Like, I enjoy living a normal life. Mm -hmm. So, what is your definition of a celebrity? I don't know. The other people that everybody else follows, <laughs> they, they don't follow me. <laughs> because the definition of celebrity means a celebrated person. Yeah, maybe they need to celebrate me. I don't know. Oh, so you are clear that you want your music to be celebrated yeah, and not you? Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to creators then, let me not call it celebrity. When it comes to creators and creators, I find that it's difficult to tell people what it is that you want, right? Because yeah. you don't appear as rude. So when you are in a space and you're creating and you want that quiet nature and there's a distraction in that, how would you handle it? Do you say, and I'm fully lona apa because we are ngola zala aambi. So there's usually a guy next to me called Dino, uh -huh. who's like assistant engineer. He, you know, so I'd be like, <laughs> and he knows. Okay. You know? All right. So like, because it's also like I, I can't be I can't be the guy saying, "Hey guys, keep quiet." Like I'm trying to be in my zone, mm -hmm. or you're killing my vibe. Mm -hmm. So I just go like. So, so it's like, <laughs> give Dino the eyes? Yeah, it's like Dino gets the eyes and then he sees like where my energy is kind of facing. Like if, I, if I'm doing this kind of thing, it means everybody here is All right. it's just too much commotion. Let's focus on the music. We like Dino because D D no, we don't Dino, know Dino. Dino's amazing. No, no, we like Dino now because Dino's, Dino's the guy. Yeah, he maintains peace, you know, and order. And, and when DJ. did your mom get so involved in your music? When, when I felt like I couldn't handle it myself in terms of like the business aspect, the structure, oh. you know, turning everything into a real a commercial, yeah, commercial and corporate infrastructure. Yeah. You know, it's different, you know, once you making beats in the bedroom and producing for other people, but once you want a proper business structure, you know, I had to really get that guidance, you know, just how to, to move in the industry mm -hmm. in a different way. And it, it was, did it take a lot of convincing or was she already? Every oh no, she was ready. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I've, I've got a hundred outfits that have been ready for the you red know? carpet, baby. <laughs> so, but also like what what was dope about it is just the learning experience. Also, me me growing up, it, it really just took me to a new level of maturity in terms of I I need to be responsible for a whole team. It's not just mm. me. I need to take care of you know it's my mother, my sister, as a sis Pums, a DJ, mm. Dino, you know, and all the other people that that are behind the scenes. So it's just a certain level of responsibility that. It sounds like a very like big entourage that you're telling. It's not an entourage. It's a it's team. It's a team. It's so a team. They don't Every, go with you everywhere. No, I, 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 I don't like rolling around with lots of people. I have too much stress for it. 
So in high school, we used to call it a loner. When yeah. you grow up, you... Fully. Yeah, in high school, you're a loner, loner right? Yeah. But I was having this conversation yesterday that there's like a negative connotation to loner. So we've decided we're going to call it an individual. So you are an individual. Yeah. You're your own person. I'm my own. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was that guy, you know? Yeah. Like one man, gunman. One man, gunman. Yeah. Oh, my word. The, the hip-hop terms are flying, which is good, because I've got a line from one of his songs that every time I speak about Anati, people are like, which Anati? The Anati who said this. So <laughs> after the... Yeah, 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 you may laugh. After the break, we're going to talk about this one line that is like his flag. Uh, he was vocally trained by the maestro RJ Benjamin Anati, a multi-talented creative with music effortlessly showcases his abilities as a producer, rapper, singer, songwriter. More when we return. And that line. And welcome back to Real Talk. Producer to the stars, Anati has been in studio with an impressive number of international heavyweights and he's clearly got that thing, man. Not even that thing. He's here, his mom is here, even his sister. We'll get to them a little bit later. Right now, that line I was telling you about. Uh, That's a lot of who. <laughs> yes, it, it, it's like, it, I don't know, like it, it, it follows you around when you said, I lost some weight so I could wear some Balmain for lost you. Lost a lot of weight just to fit in Balmain. <laughs> there we go. The well, and then you did rip on I me. Mean. <laughs> I mean, I had to fit in it some somehow. Like, I, I felt like that was just a motivation for me to actually lose weight. I never actually really lost weight at that time. Okay. But it it was like the motivation because Balmain only had size 36. Hey, babes, I know. So I'm like, I need that size 36. <laughs> you're, like, you're out here, you're like a 44. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was like a 42. And then you get to 36. <laughs> But you know? when, as a as a you know a person who's now moving into the limelight, do you do, do you feel like okay, image? There's a certain way I need to look because you know hip hop is a certain way, music is a certain way. I mean, I I take care of myself. I've always take taken care of you know how I look, but I've mm. never really fallen pressure to I don't know industry standards oh, or good. whatever the case may be. You know, even for interviews, I mean, I'm dressed in home clothes. Home clothes. Yeah. Well, you're on a couch. We're at home. Yes, but that's the thing. It's like I feel like. Some things don't have to be like so superficial, you know? Okay, but then yeah. what do you know you could be better at? Like before you sleep at night, you know, you're like, no, tomorrow I'm gonna improve this. I could be better at like social media, probably, I don't know. Really? Yeah, because other people are popping. <laughs> <laughs> popping bottles, popping personalities, popping, popping everything. Popping everything. <laughs> so popping everything for social media, so I don't know. Maybe it's fine that you like that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I enjoy living a real life in mm. real life. Mm. So, okay, real life. In real life. In real life in real life. <laughs> okay, here's real life for you. Erica Badu, Chris Brown, Amarian, DJ Khaled. And there's one Insta story I saw where it looked like... <laughs> let, let me just say things look a little rocky, if you catch what I'm saying. How did you... <laughs> if you catch what I'm saying, like... You know, oh, the little, New York. Yes, I was like, hey, man, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is the extended family of mine. Don't, don't put me on and No, I'm not going to do that, but what is that? Is that a case of being in the right place at the right time? Yeah. Who, who like, is it a case of you sit with your team and you say, that's the person I'm going with next? I don't know. We just, we just always end up at the right place at the right time. I think God just puts me in these, in these spaces. I never asked to be in the... The Jay Z room at the forty forty. <laughs> you know, it's just thing. It's just things that happen. You know, and I've just been blessed and fortunate to, to really just be in an organic space with all these people. It's not like, uh huh. So, I'm thirsting. Okay, you know, so just, organic space yeah. with these people. When you're in those rooms, do you speak business with them then and there, or do you make sure that they like you first and you become friends? I don't. I, I don't really speak business. It's more. We just speak life. You know, it's more, you learn life lessons from these people. And like everybody that I meet, they tell me about like real life things. It's not about like, oh, you know, we on tour now, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. They don't really want to hear about that. Yeah. They're just more interested about like real life. Omarion was more interested in being at home with Umama, like just, you know, being at home, chilling. Yeah. You don't want to go to the club or anything. So when do you, okay, so that's chilling with, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, cause you played rugby, so I'm gonna do the analogy in rugby, right? So chilling with them, and learning about life, real life from them, that's scoring a try. Yeah. Now there's a conversion, that like last, 
point that you must put on to get ahead? Oh, to when do you convert it to, make, to monetize it, to make it a partnership, to make it something that you're going to do, a product? That happens, uh, it just happens in the space. Like Omarion was like, hey, yeah, just plug up. And Let's when you plug, plug in your laptop oh. and play music. Oh, okay. And then, no, and then when he said that, it was a moment because it's like, the first thing I play has to be like amazing. Because uh. it's like, it's your only chance, so I, I plug up. And then he was like, what, what, what's that? Yeah, can I get on that? <laughs> <laughs> on the first song, and then I was just like, you know, it was a moment, you, you know, it was God. That pressure, right, of having to go through your catalog in your head <laughs> and be like, yo, husband's out there, and don't. Yeah, that's is, how I feel. Is that not the same pressure as trying to figure out which one is going to be the lead single when you drop an album? No. I wish it was like that. Uh. I think th because in that, in that space, you have a whole team like saying, okay, this is the next single or this is the season that we're going into. At that point, it's like, it's me and Spacebar. Oh. You know? So it's when I press Spacebar and I press play, anything could happen. Okay. They could look at me like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> or everybody could just start jumping up and dancing. So, so it so was the latter. How did the relationship between you and AKA become? Because from the outside, it looks so effortless and authentic. <laughs> and it's, you know. It's hectic, eh? Because we're actually talking about it with, like, with, with friends of mine a few weeks back. We're like, it's like it always was, but it, it wasn't. The weird thing is, like, we actually knew each other before we made music together. I think the first time we like met and hung out, I think, I think it was like 2000 and... Like something. Something. Yeah. Like 2007 or something, something like that, like way, way back. You know, actually my mom had booked him for some golf day at some, some company or whatever. Oh. So that's when we met. Mom and then, lit though, hey? Yeah, she was, it was a lituation, <laughs> you know. So, but I was consulting, you uh, know. Of course. I was consulting. Course, I said, oh, course. no, you, should, you know, you guys should have this guy perform. And then after that, I think life happened. Mm. And then we never worked with each other. And then we just, we were just like, yo, we should do something. And this is like after the whole bananas thing, him like dissing me about DJ Khaled and oh, blah, 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 yes, blah. Yes. We were still on like, okay, we should actually oh, do I something. I forgot about that. Yeah, that still happened, yeah. you know? So he dissed me about DJ Khaled, and for me, I was like, okay, cool. I mean, I was 18 working with Khaled, you know? Uh -huh. But then we, we got into studio, and I played him, I played him the saga in the car, because he had another session going on. So I said, no, just come to the car. I want to, you know, just show you this vibe. Space he get, bar. He gets, in the, he gets in the car, and then, you know, he hit the space bar. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. Like, this is it, this is it. And I remember I had that, that's a lot of weight, just to fit in Balmain. And he's like, dog, that's the vibe. This is it. <laughs> and then we did the saga. And then from there, I think the saga just continued. Mm. Up and down. So <laughs> <laughs> what, have you, what has he taught you and what have you taught him? Ooh. AKA, I just No, I mean, I said, ooh. Oh, OK, I thought you said, who? <laughs> and I was like, but when no, we're talking I'm, about Keenan here. Um, patience. He's taught you patience? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. And what have you taught him? He could tell you that. I don't, I don't want to tell you what I told him. I mean, he could tell you. What do you think he learned from you? I don't know, probably also patience. Um, calmness. Uh, calmness, yeah, but also our, our energies, are like we, we like polarize each other. It's and they're like, perfect. Yeah, and it, it just works, you know, because mm. he's, I'm not, it's not like I'm the quiet guy. Mm. I just have a more reserved energy in public. Ah. Yeah. Okay, you just gave yourself away. So I, ultimately, we are raga or body, but I feel I'm good. He knows how to calm it down. Listen, after the break, we meet Anati's younger sister who's also doing her thing in the business of music and showbiz. Anati will be back. Manala is next. Stay with us.
Her love for music was inspired by her father, Zolisa Mnyango, who was one of the first radio DJs to grace the airwaves in the Eastern Cape, but it was during her trip to Los Angeles to visit her brother when her mind was firmly made up. She was like, that's it. She wanted her slice of the pie in the music industry too. Her first single is called Trying to Find Love, and she's proving that she is more than just Anati's little sister. Manala, hello. Hello. And welcome. Thank you. <laughs> the dress though, must call it up. The dress. Where do you want to start? I want the dress. Call the, my mom. <laughs> oh, the, call you, my mom. Does your mom do your styling? Up. My mom's good with styling, hey? Oh, wow. Fashion was her thing. Okay, all right, all Call right. my mom. Give my mom a call. So, baby P? <laughs> a melody? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, so, like, you, you, you ditch these names and you're like, I am now Manala. Well... I felt like going to the States, I was going to go find who I really am. Yeah. And I was really young and I just finished um, high school. I matriculated mm. and I studied at IMM. I studied marketing for a year. I dropped out. I was like, Ma, I cannot do this anymore. Yeah. And she was like, my child, what do you want to do? I was like, Ma, let me go do what God has told me to do. Uh. Like go do music in the States. And she was just like, if that's what you need to do, then do it, my child. Was your brother already on that side? No, he had come back. Oh. So the names come from, you know, in music school, they're like, okay, so what's your stage name? And I was like, your stage name? Like, where must this come from? So Anati was like, you know, Baby P is such a cool name. Like, you're going to be the hottest thing if you're... Ba I was like, Baby P. I was like, I sound like a rapper. I know. I was like, I'm definitely not it's a like rapper. Ma. Like... <laughs> And we just sat and I was like, my mom was like, oh, my Nala, your yeah. clan name. Why not use your clan name? Uh, and it resonates so well with who I am and what I wanted to represent while I was in the States. So your sound, you know, people in creatives, first you go in and you emulate the person you like the most, right? Mm -hmm. Because that, they, they are the reason you do it. They, they are your yeah. first connection to it. Mm -hmm. And then you do enough of it where then you start finding yourself. And mm -hmm. then ultimately you land upon yourself, right? True. So I think that happened with your names. But now yeah. let's talk about your sound. Who did you try to be like when you first got Ooh, into it? Amy Winehouse. Really? Amy what a Winehouse. good problem to have though. Like, but the thing is, I think my problem was I was such a powerful singer that I didn't even understand my ability to sing and I was so scared of it and I was so scared to sing. And I always have this thing, I promise you, every time I have a show or anything, I get the nerves and I'm like, I can't sing. And they're like, what do you mean you can't sing? I'm like, I'm scared of what's about to come out, even though it's gonna be beautiful and people are gonna appreciate it. But the thing is, self-belief is such a difficult thing, especially when you're a young lady. Mm. It's very hard to believe in yourself. Mm. So yeah, Amy was the one. So, okay, so Amy's then like the star that we look to. Right now, the soundboard, the person who- I'm looking. Who, who makes that, that, that I can't sing thing go away almost immediately, outside of your self-belief. Surely there's somebody who, who makes you better at what you do. Who is it? My own brother. Okay. Because he's always like, dude, you're the best. Like, don't even, don't fear what you shouldn't fear. Uh. You know, and he's always like, no one else will believe in you more than you can believe in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, then, then you no know, one else has got a choice but to believe Who's going to well. tell you you're wrong? Uh. Who's going to tell you you're wrong? So I guess he's always there to motivate me and push me to be the best vocalist and musician that I can be. So what was a big deal for you to get? In terms of? So, uh, so for me, ultimately, the show was a big deal for me to get, you know. But prior to it, obviously, I, you know, I started radio at 17. So mm. when I was doing it, we did graveyards, but then, then we'd get promoted, and then you get weekend breakfast, and then you get yeah. weekday lunch. So for me, a big deal was for me to get to the breakfast show wherever I was. Ooh. So every time, like something is always within your reach, but mm. what was the, what was the I big deal? I think it was my actual move to the States. And I think it was also performing in the States mm. and having um, mentors like Philip Ingram, whose brother was James, is Ingram. James, was or James. like he died, James Ingram. So it was just doing big things like that and getting noticed by different people because uh. they're like, oh no, you're different. You got that African accent. There's something different about you. Where's your music? Where can I find you? So I think that was like a big breaking point for myself. Mm. And also when I returned home and I re released Trying to Find Love and the love that I got from releasing Trying to Find Love, I was like, wow, I must be making some good music. There's something I'm doing yeah. right. 
And when it comes to incorporating Kosa into what you do, are you scared of it? Because you're like, yo, how am I going to sound? Am I speaking half a Kosa? Like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, and you know, when people make Kosa up, yeah. they mess it up. But that's how you speak Kosa. You have to English. You can no? English. 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 It. <laughs> you know? It's funny enough, now that I'm getting older, I want to put more Kosa into my songs because that's of nice. Kosa. Yeah. And, um, Anati is actually helping me in that process. And last night we actually had a writing camp with JR. Uh, and um, the hook of the song is basically in Kosa, but it's such a strong song. And it's like empowering women. But wow, did I not struggle in my <laughs> speaking my own language. But it was an amazing experience. And he was another one that was like, you know, as a woman, you need to believe in yourself so you can show other women how to believe in themselves. Mm. Because there's not a lot of female vocalists who are flourishing mm. here in South or Africa. Or producing for yeah. themselves. So, what was, what was the psyche behind producing for yourself? Oh, I didn't even know I could do it until, I promise you, I've always been in a box. And Anati has been so frustrated with me because he's like, dude, just get out of this box. Like, release yourself. And I'm like, no, but like this note is wrong. Yeah. And that doesn't sound right. And yeah. is it supposed to be like this? Am I writing? Like, he's like, write the way you want to write. And one of my mentors um, in LA, we had a songwriting class. Mm. And she's like, okay, so for final year, you guys have to produce a song and write it. I was like, well, you, what? We have to do what? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> say, say who? <laughs> so I wrote a song and it was inspired by J. Cole. And it was like, wow, I oh. actually can produce music and songwrite. So I think that was like one of, like it was a big eye opener for uh, me. Uh. So the first time I saw you perform was at a 21st birthday. Yes. <laughs> in Artis, you were wearing a white dress. I was. Yes, it was a white dress and there were shorts underneath and the dress was flowy on the Ooh. outside. Memory. Memory on a thousand. Me. Me. <laughs> and I remember, I think they said you were 16 and I was like, she is 16 and she yeah. sounds like that. But I, in, in the years I've seen you come out your shell, right? When it comes to your stage presence, which now is on, on, on fleek, right? <laughs> what you. was the process in like coming out of your shell so that you can deliver on a record as mm. well as on stage? I think it's being pushed out of my comfort, comfort zone mm. and also getting to know who I am and being comfortable with who I am. So it's like someone telling you your name. You cannot, you know, say, no, that's not my name. Yeah, that's yeah, my name. Yeah. And I have to stand proud and represent my name. So I guess it's, it's a thing. People are looking at me. Uh, so I want people to appreciate what I'm giving to them. So when you're on stage, you have to have that, like, yeah, that I'm giving, I'm giving you, you yeah. a part of me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Take it. <laughs> yeah, it is. Take it all. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I look forward to the summer, the Grammy. All of know, it. You know, all of it. All God's of it. blessings. We receive. We receive. We receive. <laughs> uh, Manala, thank you so much. Thank for your you time. for having me. Susana. You are going to flourish. The thank future you. of hip hop and R and B is looking. See, I must know. Thanks to Anati and Manala. After the break, we meet the pillar of life and love and business to them, the woman who knows them better than anybody knows them, including themselves, their mother, Alala. Do, do. <laughs> And we're back right now. I'm joined by the woman who has always been with Anati and Manala, a woman who believes so much in her children's dreams that she gave up her corporate ladder climb to start from the bottom in a very different kind of boardroom, the boardroom of records and showbiz. We welcome Mum Toko. Huh? <laughs> well, I, I think, like, people watch you and they and people, kids want to do music. It's kind of like they'll look at you and be like, mm, you know, that's mm. where it's at. Because I always say South Africa doesn't have a talent problem. We have a management problem. Yes. Is this what you saw when you decided I'm going in? Um, yes. I, I, I didn't like what I, I was experiencing, mm. basically. Um, I, I just feel that most, most children out there that mm. follow their passion, mainly in the art space, I don't think there's, the, there's, a, there's a training in it, you know, from a business perspective. Uh -huh. Yes, kids are talented. They know what they're supposed to do. But I'm not certain if they understand the business yeah. of arts, you know, regardless of whatever it is. And I, I just felt that the, the, the knowledge and the experience that I'd accumulated in building blue chip yes. companies listed in the JSE, it could be something that I emulate, you know, in my kids. Um, but it was not an easy call. 
Really? Because, yes. It Did was it not wasn't painful? No, it didn't. The decision was easy to make, uh -huh. you know, and, and it didn't start necessarily from managing them. It started mainly from me wanting to be a mother. Uh, That's how it started. Which is your natural calling. Which is my natural calling, but that I never experienced and practiced. Mm. You know, I, I, I was a biological mother, mm. but I was not a mother in the true sense, you know. Explain that. I remember when I was, um, when Anati was probably three months and I was on maternity leave, I, I needed to go back to work. I needed to go back to the boardroom. At, at that time, I was a legal advisor for a development corporation. And fortunately, it wasn't far where I stayed. Yeah. So I would say to Auntie, please, when, when he wakes up, yeah. call me so that I can come and breastfeed. I, I couldn't just sit at home and, 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 and be watching a, a baby. Yeah. And I think at two months, I said to my mom, I can't do this. I need to go. And my husband and I packed and I went to, I went to Italy for, for a month. And then, so that has always been me, and mm. it does not necessarily mean that I loved my kids less, yeah, you I know, believe. but I, I, I don't think I was cut out. I'm not domesticated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like, I, I just don't like yeah. doing what other women like doing. Yeah. And I think with the kids as well, I, I, I don't, I love my children. I love them dearly. Uh, but you, but you know how to be yourself. Yes. You know I, how to exist outside of them, which yes. I don't think many women know how to get right. Yes. And, and then people are like, oh, what are you going to do when the kids move out and they move away? You're like, I'm going to be fine. I, I now have a, a, a daughter that's turning four. Uh. And people are like, why do you have a child at your age? And what have you, what are you going to do? And I'm like, ask a question. What did I do with the eldest, mm. you know, the eldest children that I have? I, I, I never necessarily was there for them. So the decision for me to leave the corporate world was more on saying, you know what? I've lost probably 13 years of my children's lives. Mm. Uh, chasing the boardroom. Mm. Um, now it's time because the person that was there for them, which was their father, is no longer. Because for him, it was, it was the other way around. Yeah. It was his children and then, you know, then business. Mom. No, yeah. no, no. Children and his business. Yeah. His mom was always in, the, in, yeah. the, in, in it as well. But he, he lived his life for his kids. Even if he was in a meeting, he would actually say, you know what, I need to go pick up my kids from school. Wow. I need to do this for my children. Oh, girl, I never well. bothered. I never bothered myself yeah. about that. So, so I, I, I chose well, I think. Yeah, you did as well. <laughs> I did, chose very yeah. well. And, 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 and so I think the, 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 the decision for me to leave the corporate world was to say there is a gap and nobody can fill in that gap except, except for and me. And those years I spent in the corporate world can now come, can now in, come in. In handy. Yes. So and at the, time, it, at the time I left, um, they were still both in high school. Uh, so um, it, it was now I had time to go for, you know, when they, I remember Manala at, 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 <clears throat> at the music side of school, they had every week, they had shows mm -hmm. or practice. I don't know. I can't remember what they were called. And for the first time in my life, I would attend those religiously yeah. every week. And then and, and it changed my life. And I started appreciating my kids even more, mm -hmm. you know, and I started being, I think, a hands-on mother, yeah. so to speak. And when, 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 when they showed their interest in the, in the field <clears throat> that they're in right now, it made so much sense for me to, to look at how do I hone my mm. skills in mm. understanding this monster? Because people don't understand that the entertainment world is not just by them getting gigs and going in and performing and coming back. There's a machine, there's, <coughs> there's, there's a, a machine. team there's around a it. Not just a team, yeah. but you, you, you just, you need to understand the goings in, you know? It, it's so complex. It's so mm. complex such that I had to read a book Yes, I had to read a, a, a textbook, uh, Manala can, I don't know who the author is, mm. but it's a book that she literally, when I said I'm interested in actually getting this, I said, mom, you have to read this book so that you can understand, okay. you know, understand the engineers behind it, the agents, you know, the production team, the management, and I, they joke about it. But I say to them, yes, you have the team, yeah. you know, but mama is not just momager. Is executive moment. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? at the end of the day. But for me, Anela, is, 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 is having this organogram yeah. in this space that says, I'm going to have everybody else doing whatever that they're supposed to be and doing. I'm going to oversee it. I'm going to oversee it. 
I'm going to oversee. So I don't want to be your manager. I don't want to be your roadie. I don't want to no. be your, the person who decides which song is which. But they will certainly answer to me. Yes. Okay. Everybody has to be answerable to me. Yeah. And it, it happens like that. And, and, and it's, 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 it's not forced. It's so organic. Like it's, motherhood. It's, it's very organic. It's very organic. The actual team itself, it yeah. gels so well together. And so as, a, as a mom, um, and I used to watch my mom do this a lot, they, she could see a long ahead of me and my sisters when someone, you know, when she, was, when she doesn't like a friend, and you think, Asuka, man, you know, this is my friend, you know, and then what she said this one is going to do, she, that friend would actually end up doing. Yes. So when it comes to business, how do you then draw the lines? But I don't like that person for you. But this, you want them around for your career. <laughs> I think there's a backstory there. <laughs> there is a backstory to this one, and I'm not sure whether uh, I can tell this. You know, I, you, Anati spoke about the saga continues. Yeah. Um, when, when he produced the album, and we needed to then launch the album, um, in the album, there were decisions that needed to be made on the songs that must be in the album. And the saga was probably one of those songs. And I made a corporate decision, mm. a business decision that says there is no better person that you can have with the saga or in the saga, mm. except for Kenan. Yes. It makes so much sense for you to have Kenan in this yeah. thing. And lo and behold, be careful what you wish for is probably the best thing that has actually come as a result of what was brewed yeah. in the space of utilizing and usurping that corporate mind that says, if you have a vision, you know, these are the things that you actually look into. They're not short-lived um, short um, plans. Mm. They are long-term plans. You need to be able to, to, to see longevity in yeah. whatever that you're doing. And for me, this is where it goes. And one thing that I always make sure that the kids understand, it is not overnight success that I preach. Mm. You need to be patient. Everything needs to be organic, yeah. you know? It's painful, and painful as it might be, the sustainability thereof mm. is priceless. Okay. I want you to come back on just a, an episode where we're just talking motherhood, not mother's entertainment, because there's a lot here. Okay. There. There's a lot there, so she's coming back. Talking motherhood. Look, time for a quick ad break. On the other side of this, it's a family affair. Anati Manala will be joining their mom on the couch. You don't want to miss it. And we're back. You're watching Real Talk with myself, Anele, now joined by the Myangos who have lived music all their lives. Welcome back, Anati Manala, as well as the mom of Justice Toko. I, I just feel like I don't want to say sis talk any longer. C can we just call you T? Because you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Call me sis talk. Sis talk. Sis talk. I love it that way. That's straight up. <laughs> this is what I want to know. Because, like, there's a. You know, it's the entertainment industry, but no. you're with your mom. Is she strict, Manala? To a certain extent. She knows how to put you in your place, but she's not, like, strict. So when was the last time you had to be put in check? Like, how? Never, I'm the good child. This one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So when were you put in check last? I don't know. I can't remember. When last, ma? Every day. <laughs> every day? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's like, it's more of like an everyday every kind of thing. <laughs> I, I remember my mom slapping me in front of the school and I was in the trip. No, no, not that put in check. Not, not that put not in check. I was like ducking, I was like, whoa. No, no, not that one. Okay, not so that one. You, you, you haven't like physically... I, I think it's, it's more trying to sustain the groundness oh. uh, more than anything else and not letting people forget who they are. Okay, would you say yes. that that's the most important thing you are doing right now? Yeah. And I want to go back because parents can always see their children before, you know, we can see ourselves. When did you see that your kids had a, like a natural gift for music? With Anat, it was a strange thing, and I'm not sure whether people can believe it. I think it started in my tummy. Really? Yes. We were a very vibing family, and every time music was playing, he would kick me like crazy. And as a result, I would actually want to like, get out of the vibey situation. So, mm. yeah. So then, but it started, I think, when he was probably three or four years old. Mm. I, I, that's when I, I, I could realize that, yeah, this was something different. Because he was playing with ports, and mm. you know, we have those uh, 
plastic containers we call tupperware tupperware yes. tupperware ga mama wooden spoons and uh. all those things so that's when it started um with him with umana like it started i think when she was two she used to have a very she still does actually i made a comment i think two days ago with my personal trainer she has something that goes uh every day uh. without fail so she started doing that at two and with her i think the love of music i think i realized when the father and i took them to michael jackson oh uh, I think Anati was four. I knew it. I knew it. And patient. <laughs> you, you knew it was Anati. Oh, you know somebody says like, you've never seen Michael Jackson. I said, I haven't seen Michael Jackson. <laughs> you're, like, and then you're like, have I? Yeah, I'm like, wait, have I? Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Have. So when, when we came back from Devon, I think uh, with the cousins and them, they, they were fighting over TV. But Michael Jackson was pay, playing on TV. Oh. And with Manala and the other cousins, it was like they thought that they were having Michael Jackson in the house. Uh. And yeah, so the rest is history. <laughs> the TV, broke, TV broke, she broke a TV. Because Michael's, yeah. yeah Michael the is the like, Michael! I want Michael Jackson, you know? So, and it, it started like that. Um, so, uh, until when, I, I think until... So, I mean, I mean, they go to school and they study and do you, do you, do you, do you have like other hopes for them? Because Ultimately, you can see how the industry works, right? Where you're like, Ish, you know, people, people rise and then people fall. And then, you know, our entertainers, like, majority of them die poor. Is that not like a reservation for you? No, because there's a principle that I think I, I brought them up with, uh -huh. you know, um, that says life is about choices. Mm. You know, the choice you make is the choice that you have to live with. Mm. For the rest of your for life. For the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I can and, see she's used uh, to hearing it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I've always believed in that, and they always believed in it. We moved into a place where it is self-contained, uh, necessarily because I thought they would walk to school and so on and so yeah. forth. They are the ones that did their own homework and right. came back to me and said, Mom, there's a private school that's opening um, that has both academy and academics. Okay. And I'm like, are you sure you're going to be able to cope? Because that means now 14 subjects. Mm. They're like, no, it's fine. Okay. So you've got it. So you've got it. Trusted them, mm. gave them the opportunity to do that. Both of them came with the proposal to do that. It didn't come from them, from me. So that's, that's when it started. Officially. Officially. Yes. When has your mom ever said no to you? And at the moment, when she said no, you were like, and now in hindsight, you're like, thank you. Like a tattoo or like a piercing. No. Or oh, I think when I was like really young, you know, the belly ring things were in fashion and I really wanted one. And she was like, no. Yeah. And I was like, girl, come on, like everybody doing it. <laughs> and she was like, girl, no. And like now today, I'm so thankful because I'm just like, I wouldn't have done that today. Like I wouldn't still want it. Yeah. So she's always known how to put me in check when mm. I lose my way. And I'm very appreciative of that because most mothers don't do that. Mm -hmm. And most parents don't do that. Mm. And then children go living their life the wrong way. Because so. I think, you know, we've reached an age where parents want to be just friends with their children, yeah. you know, and they forget to parent because they're like, oh, we're so cool. We like wear yeah. the same clothes and we go to the same places. So I, I see what you're saying. How do you know your mom likes your song? How do I know? Yeah, like what does the, the, she, like when you play her something, does she like pull her face or she, what, like, what? Ah, she's laughing. So no, I, I know. <laughs> okay, cool. You both answer this. How do you know when your mom likes your song? I don't know. The I was going to ask them because I don't know. She, she, she does this thing because Anati and I like bob our head the same way. Eh? And we do this thing with our like fingers. So she always goes like this, but it's always like so subtle. <laughs> and she looks like she's oh, like, yeah, listening she to like... opera. She's like. <laughs> Or she'll sing a line and I'm just like, wow. Wow. Oh, I'll wow. bump my head. But it, her rhythm is not like our rhythm. It's Which means? It's on another level. It's bad. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> so I know you guys can have got the rhythm. So what are we saying about Mama Bear over here? Yeah, it's just one, two it's steps. It's tricky. Very it's tricky. tricky. Yeah. So it's creative and it's music and then it's commercial and money. What lesson stands out from your mother about money now, about the money, because... About money? Yeah. I don't know, probably the biggest lesson is just, you know, probably seeing her in her corporate career and space, yes. you know, be, be a strong woman, you know, it's, and, and that space is really dominated by males, oh. you know, so over the years, I mean, she was working in a corporate space over 15 years, I mean, oh. or how long, I don't know, you know, 
but it's just long. just seeing yeah but just seeing that determination and you know willingness to just always strive you know as a single mother she raised us you know mm -hmm. through through thick and thin you know it's not only been great times but it's we've had dark times and just you know seeing her just you know hold everything down has is probably been the best and you money <laughs> how to spend it but oh. also how to keep it oh. and that Simple. money doesn't buy you happiness and there's more than life than money okay speaking of life you have family that has experienced grief how do, how do you, because every year, you know, the day comes and you remember it, both from losing a child and a sibling mm -hmm. and, and losing a father and losing a husband. Like, how does the family, you know, stay, like, like together when you remember the grief? I think from the father's side, I think it's, it's more what he said to me that is very profound, you know, that he believed in, in life mm -hmm. um, and he's lived his life to the fullest. So it becomes a consolation knowing that, you know, mm -hmm. that somebody has departed, but he has lived his life to the fullest. And the joy of these wonderful, you know, bambinos here. Yeah. I call them Nana, and the other one is Nunu. Oh. <laughs> There's and, a song and, there, Nana and Nunu. I'm just yes. saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it, 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 it's painful and I think it becomes more painful when you see them progress the way they're progressing and um, but you don't necessarily live in the graveyard yeah. so to speak you know because you can never be able to achieve what you want to achieve in life because you, ca you cannot live your life in darkness yeah. and that, that's what I always say to them that that's my belief yes we have the, the ones that have left us and um, they're probably there as, as, as our angels, so yeah. to speak. And, and what is strange with them and the profession, I always say, in fact, Anati once said this to me, if dad was still alive, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Yeah, and, I and, and, I fi and I found it a very, a very you know, a profound statement because some parents, we believe that our kids must be doctors, engineers, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I know for a fact that their dad would probably wanted them to be something other than what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but what is strange is that in everything that they do musically, mm. for some reason, whether it's true or false, that those that have gone are still part of us, I see him in them, in what they're doing. All right. On that note, thank you so much. Anati, carry on with what you're doing. Manala, you're amazing. Please Thank carry you. on. And you've got the most beautiful face ever. <laughs> Sister Tata. Hello, my dear. I, hello, Adob. I'm coming. I'm bringing my adoption papers. You're That's welcome. all we have time for. A big thank you to the Myango family. They have taught us that in a family that prays and sings together, definitely stays together. Anati's latest album with AKA dropped recently. It's called Be Careful What You Wish For. Get his and Manala's work online and at a music outlet near you. From myself and the Real Talk team, we're out of here. We'll see you next time.